Hey, Brad. Hey, congratulations on your film Ambulance. I, I just saw it. It was uh, so much action. I forget to breathe. <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 terrific. So uh, so let let's talk about this first. Is uh, how did you and your company got involved with the uh, ambulance? Sure. So um, the, the the rights to the original Danish film were brought to me by Chris Pedak, who is the screenwriter um, who adapted it for us. Um, actually, Chris's manager is a guy named Michael Bondison, who um, uh, is Danish. So uh, I think he, I, I'm pretty sure he had identified the film and thought it, would, it, it could really make a cool remake, um, and that, that his client, Chris, could do a great job on it, which he did. Um, so we, um, we acquired the rights uh, from Nordisk and, um, and then worked with Chris and, you know, developed the, developed the script. And um, went to our first choice director, Michael Bay, who, who originally was not available. Um, so the project went through several iterations uh, with other filmmakers and um, starts and stops, as is pretty common, as you know. Um, and then the timing just worked, and we didn't give up on trying to figure out a way to get Bay's attention. Um, and he ended up reading it and loving it and then things took off pretty fast why was uh, michael bay your your first choice uh, because a lot of us uh, when we think of michael bay you know we think of you know like transformer franchise or you know extremely loud explosions and so on but you know this is a this is a very long uh, car chase movie Originally, we, we thought about Michael um, was actually the films that he made in the 90s, the, 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 the movies that sort of put him on the map, like Bad Boys and The Rock um, and even Armageddon. And, and the reason is, is the reason that those films um, came to mind, it, it, was, it was less about, of course, he's the master of big cinematic action and explosions and helicopters and intensity and, and all of the things that are kind of self-evident that you'd want, right, um, in, in the visual execution of this kind of story. But the characters that Michael brought to life on screen in the 90s were so larger than life and had such a great dynamic and great fun to them, and, and that, that's really another element in, in this film that was so important, um, was making sure that, first of all, these characters were going to have a connection with each other um, that, that the audience was going to want to watch and follow in a small space, right, for, for all of this time, because as much as everything that's going on around it and as exciting as a chase through a city is, um, it's really, it's really the relationships and the um, surprises that come out of uh, what's happening between these two brothers and, and Cam who's thrown into the situation that, you know, I think either makes or breaks the film. And you know, when you think about like what he did with Bad Boys, I mean, that that the humor that ran into it alongside the action as part of it was probably one of the most successful examples of, uh, right, of that, that sort of two-hander action movie at that time. And I think, I think what he did with those movies um, all those years ago really changed uh, the, the blockbuster as we know it. Um, so those were the films that I was thinking about in, in his um, filmography more than the more recent Transformers franchise. Although, I, you know, I, I love the Transformers movies as you know, as, as, as much as, anyone, as everyone. So, um, but that was that was what kind of clicked for me when when I was thinking, okay, who's the perfect director for this film? Now, I guess uh, when you know, since uh, Michael Bay, every time he makes a movie, it was seems to be you know 
bigger and larger budgets and so on. But this, uh, this seems to be like one of the, <laughs> I don't want to say one of the smaller budget films um, for for him since uh, Pain Pain and Gain, but uh, but was it was it easy for him to scale back and sometimes even mock himself through this film? Well, I I I, I think that well, there are two different questions, but I'll answer both of them. But on on the budget question, he takes incredible pride in how um, rigorous he is and disciplined he is about making sure that money is not wasted and resources are not wasted um, on screen. I mean, I've never, I've worked with a lot of directors from David Fincher to Martin Scorsese to Aronofsky to Roland Emmerich to Antoine Fuqua, uh, and, and they're all very focused on budget. I have never seen a director scrutinize every line of a budget like they. Um, and, and the, the and that, so that's one. Two, the extent to which he insisted on having a very small production footprint was all, which I think was also part of that 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 discipline of just making sure that you know we had every resource we could possibly have put on the screen and nothing was wasted. And especially because don't forget this this film was shot not only during COVID, but at the height of COVID in downtown Los Angeles at a time when downtown LA or LA proper kind of was taking its turn as the ground zero of COVID in the world. You know, it, it, that was always sort of cycling around depending on what time of year it was. And when it was probably about a week before we started shooting, um, LA was, was the number one hotspot. Um, so that was another element that just made it really important that, um, you know, that, that we were as lean and late footed as possible. I was going to ask about this, yeah. uh, this uh, production. Um, how did you guys pull off, uh, you know, closing the streets of LA? I, I was going to say how many Sundays this was, but it sounds like you guys actually did it uh, over the course of several days. So, yeah, I mean, um, look, it, it was, it was a traditional shoot in terms of the, um, uh, the, the number of days, you know, we shot, we shot for about 38 days, main unit. Um, the, uh, at the time LA was, uh, was in lockdown and the motion picture industry was one of the few industries, uh, which was considered an essential business. So we were able to continue to operate. So production was, was still happening. Um, so, it, you know, there, there was, there was a plus and a minus to that, right? The plus was um, there wasn't as much traffic on the streets. Um, we still did make sure that, you know, certain locations when, when we were having to close everything down, like outside the bank, um, for that, that big uh, robbery scene in the aftermath with all the police, that that was shot on, you know, on a weekend. Um, but the challenge was, you know, there were times when we would get a phone call at a location like the LA Convention Center um, uh, that we confirmed and, and for a certain date and planned to, to be there in our schedule suddenly got pulled from us because the city had to use it as a, as a um, uh, testing center. Um, or there was a neighborhood that was a little bit nervous about a film crew being there, you know, when everyone was still trying to figure out what what was happening, right, with COVID and, and what you could do and what you couldn't do. We, we had an amazing group of epidemiologists that were guiding us and um, health and safety officers. And, uh, even, you know, even though we were, we were filming at that time, um, you know, I think it's a testament to, to the discipline that, that Michael showed and our, our testing regimen um, that we didn't have to shut down once during our shoot. Um, so it, it, it was a real challenge. And I, I, I produced another film after that, also during the pandemic, and um, took a lot uh, from my experience uh, producing this movie um, into that one. And now, you know, now it's sort of, it's become common practice. Like, everybody knows, uh, you know, about zones and, you know, how important it is to test. Um, and actually, that, that was a really important piece of it. We tested our A zone every day, which meant that if somebody did pop positive, 
didn't have to make an assumption that on a, on a day that there wasn't testing that they were positive then because we, you know, we knew we had the data. So um, we didn't have to suddenly pull in all close contacts from a day that we didn't have data for because we have the data. Um, so, it, you know, it was, it was a challenge, but we, we got through it. You guys certainly did. And um, when I was watching this movie, as, as a person who frequents uh, Los Angeles quite a bit, uh, I recognize a lot of landmarks, street signs, and, uh, you know, even the, the backgrounds. Do you see this like a sort of like a love letter to uh, Los Angeles in its own way? I do, yeah. You know, I, I, I always hoped that we would be able to shoot the film in L.A. Um, uh, and, and we had, before Michael came on, we had looked at different scenarios at, in, in cities outside of California um, just because the tax incentive in California is, is, not, um, is not as um, uh, strong as, as, in, as in some other states. Um, but when Michael came on, that was, that was one of the things that really attracted him, I think. You know, he grew up in L.A., um, and I think L.A. is really the fourth character in the movie, the fourth lead. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, I, I love films that, that kind of celebrate the city and when, when, when the city and the environment is really a big part of the storytelling, which it was here, um, it's, yeah, I, I, I think it just, it just adds another really cool layer to, to the film. Um, and I think, I think it's really distinct and, and helps it stand out. So, yeah, I, I would consider it a love letter to LA. Great. Um, now, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I understand you worked with uh, Jake Gyllenhaal uh, before because I haven't seen him in such a, you know, dark role yeah. since. The, the... Yeah, we did Zodiac together. Oh, I was going to say I haven't seen him since a, you know, a dark role like since Nightcrawler or something like that. Myself. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Jake and I. Jake and I have known each other for a long time. Um, uh, like I said, we did we did Zodiac together with with Fincher, and actually his company Nine Stories has a first look deal with my company uh, New Republic Pictures. Um, so yeah, when this when this came up, um, I called him and and just asked, um, hey, you know what what do you think about working with Michael Bay? And and he kind of we were on a Zoom and he stopped and he, he kind of like considered for for a second, and then he started nodding his head and he said. Uh, I would absolutely work with Michael Bay. <laughs> and I said, okay, good. I'm going to send you a script. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's how, that's how he got involved. And then, you know, we actually did talk about which character, right? Cause there's, you could see a version of him playing Will or Danny. Um, and, you know, I think he was drawn to, um, the, the, you know, he's not, I hesitate to call Danny the villain because I think he's a more complex character and more nuanced character than that um but i think it was i think it was a different um a different muscle um for jake and i think he really had a great time playing him awesome well one, one more thing brad before I, I let you go because i know uh you produce you know a number of films uh in the past and the upcoming but uh you have two blockbuster coming up pretty soon both Transformers and Mission Impossible. Just, just for fun, which 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 one of those you're more excited for? Oh, I, yeah, that, that's like that's like asking someone to, to choose which kid they love most. <laughs> um, <laughs> which is, I, I look, I you know what, I'm excited to, to be involved in both of them. Um, uh, you know, my, my company, um, along with my, my partners, um, Brian Oliver and, and Valerie Ann, we're, we, have, we have a deal over at Paramount, and, you know, we, we came into those franchises a little bit later, um, so, you know, we're, we're just thrilled to, to be a part of, um, you know, of, of helping bring them to life, and, uh, you know, exci excited for them to actually come out on, on the big screen, because uh, I think now, you know, now that, that it feels like the fog of war from this pandemic is lifting a little bit, um, and people are starting to feel more comfortable going out and, you know, taking masks off and, and going back to the movie theater. Um, I think it's movies like like those um, and like Ambulance that, you know, that are going to really remind people, again, just how, you know, how great it is to sit in, in a big, dark space and just be transported to... You know, to to 
a, a wonderful story with great characters that can just kind of take them away for a couple of hours. Most definitely. And an ambulance is certainly that, that movie. Thank you very much, Brad, for uh, speaking to us about this film. It, it has been a pleasure. My, my pleasure. Great. Great meeting you. I hope to talk again soon. Hey, thank you. Appreciate it. Next time. Thanks, sir.